Hi there friends, this video is about taking breaks in science and why it's so important. Well, the obvious truth is that taking breaks is important. I'm sure you've heard it before from other people as well. And the reason is that passion doesn't really protect you from burnout and exhaustion, even though you might think it does. My work is so cool, I could never go wrong basically doing more of it. And this burnout thing will simply never happen to me. Now, this is simply just not true because, let's be honest, not everything about our work is equally awesome. There are always annoying bits in everything that we do and that that can get to you is quite clear. Now, passion and excitement for your work is very positive, of course. You should have it. It's great. But you can also damage yourself and your mental health can suffer if you don't rein that passion in and use it in a reasonable way. So it is important to keep your passion, but to use it in the right dosage. Now let's just talk about three examples how unbridled enthusiasm for your work can actually be negative for you. Now, if you are passionate about your work, that typically leads to quite a high intensity in the things that you do. You typically go all out. Now, what this often leads to is overcommitment because you kind of find everything interesting and you have a difficult time saying no because, of course, this is also cool. And this can really lead to a path where you neglect self-care and this can lead to exhaustion and burnout and feelings of being overwhelmed. Second example, maybe your passion for your work leads you to have unrealistic expectations about your success for your work and for yourself. Now, if these expectations are not fulfilled, and this can happen for a very large number of reasons, maybe an experiment fails, there are non-optimal external circumstances, or just things come up that don't go your way, then this can lead to intense frustration and a cycle of negativity. Now, what am I even doing here? Am I even good enough for this? Seems like other people are doing much better and so on and so forth. And a third example, passion typically leads people to work long hours because they find what they're doing very cool. And then they don't take the right amount of breaks and downtime and they don't get the proper amount of rest. Now, this can also lead to exhaustion and frustration. And of course, more work doesn't necessarily lead to more output because they're always diminishing returns. And so, for example, if you are tired and you work in the lab, you tend to make more mistakes and you tend to be less effective and you also tend to have fewer ideas, let's say. And all of this can lead to more exhaustion and fatigue. Well, I'm putting all this work into it, but I don't really see this progressing very much just because you haven't gotten the rest you needed. So clearly, passion for your work is great, but use it with caution. How do you do that? You take breaks. But what kind of breaks? Now, this is where you need to experiment with yourself. You need to figure out what works for you. You cannot really take other people's advice because what works for them, it simply may not work for you. For some people I know, it's taking a month or six week long vacation, once a year, just completely unplugging, going someplace, not thinking about work at all, and then coming back refreshed and with new energy. This works for them. It probably works for many other people. It, for example, doesn't work for me at all. If I'm gone for too long, I just get antsy and I just get stressed out. So this is definitely not an effective way to go about things for me. But this I figured out through trial and error. You can also do mini vacations, for example, during a day. During the day, for example, take a nice walk in a park or go for a coffee or look at some exhibit or whatever. I also have some colleagues that just take a nice nap every afternoon. And it is one of my life goals to have at some point in the future an office with a nice sofa so I could try this out. But taking these little mini breaks during the day, this works really well for me. It may not work for you at all because maybe you need a longer period of time when you just have uh, unplugged, but it does work for me. Or you could just take a day off in the middle of the week, just take a day off or have a longer weekend, uh, whatever you need when you feel that it's getting too much. Sometimes I can definitely feel that right now it's just too much and 
I need to take this day off. This is fine if it works for you. And again, if it works for you, you need to figure that out for yourself by trial and error. Now, taking these breaks, you might think, often it seems like impossible. How can I do that? I have all these deadlines, I have all these demands on my time. And believe me, I have tons of demands on my time, but I still manage to do all these breaks. Because you always can if you put your mind to it. And you got to imagine the alternative is like if you work to the point of exhaustion and you suffer from burnout, then you really do get nothing done. And the cost of that, they are far, far worse, your effects on your mental health aside, on your output than having these short downtimes. Now, ironically, these breaks can really also be directly beneficial for your productivity. Now, why is this? This is actually quite well known. During these breaks, you can have boosts in creativity. If you hold a problem very loosely in your mind, as you actually think and do something entirely different, your mind keeps working on solutions for this problem while you relax and don't actually think about this problem at all. It's not by coincidence that we often have these eureka moments or great ideas when we walk to work thinking about nothing at all or in the shower. This is all by design. When you have these downtimes, then your subconscious, it works on solutions for something that you have like um, a problem that you're generally concerned with without actively working on it yourself. So very often also taking a fresh look at something that you were stuck at after you've had some downtime can work really well. I've had many instances where I got stuck in some manuscript in terms of the structure, for example. It just didn't make sense, didn't come together and kept working on it. And then I just stopped, walked away, <laughs> took a break, came back like maybe to this task one, two days later. And all for a sudden, it was just crystal clear to the point that I thought like, why didn't I see that before? But you didn't because you got exhausted thinking about this particular issue and you were much better off not working on this and instead taking a break. And then when you come back, it all comes so much easier to you. I think this is not a coincidence. I think this is really something you can use. So make sure you take the breaks and the vacations in a way that are beneficial for you. And remember, you cannot really copy that from somebody else. You can only try out what works best for you by trial and error. So this is just a call for a little bit of personal experimentation. Now also burnout and exhaustion are a sure way to lose your passion for and your interest in your work. And we don't want that to happen because as I said, this passion and interest in your work in science and research is fundamentally a wonderful thing. It's a great thing. It's one of the best things about this job. But you gotta manage it. You gotta be mindful, <laughs> to use this word about it. You gotta rein in your passion so it doesn't completely take over your life and lead you to do unhealthy things that you later on regret. That is the bottom line. So figure out what works for you. Take the time to figure this out. You're going to thank yourself later for it. It's very important. With that, take the breaks you need. Have a great day. See you in the next video.